Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. In this video, I wanna talk about how to light your hair studio or small salon or small barber shop. Now, I actually have done this video before, but I'm doing it again because technology has changed and I personally have found some new solutions for my own space here and I wanted to kind of update the information here. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the position of your lighting. If you were to look at the house lights in most buildings, you would find that they're, especially if you get these like can lights, these LEDs up in the ceiling, they're kind of spotlights pointed downward. And a lot of times in salons, I'll see like track lights where they'll put some at every station. So you have these little spotlights pointed at your client. Now the trouble with a light pointing directly at your client is it creates hard shadows. For example here, I took a light and I, I put it along the edge of this backdrop here and I put the model model along the edge of the backdrop as well. Now you would never want to do this. Don't let your subject ever touch the backdrop. You want space there. But the reason I put it against the backdrop is so that we can see the shape of the light coming out of the light source. So with a small light source pointed directly at the model, basically because it's a small source, it, it, it's going to hit whatever is closest to the light and it's not going to be able to miss those things to hit other things that are further from the light because it's coming from such a small pointed area that I just poked myself in the eye, what's wrong with me? It's coming from such a small point right here that it can't miss certain features on the face. And so what you end up getting is everywhere the face curves away from the light source, no light is hitting that side of the face away from the light source. And so you get a really hard, abrupt fall off is what they call it from highlight to shadow. Now, granted, if you have 20 of these lights in the room, it's not gonna look so stark and harsh as it does in this example that I'm showing here you'll have a little bit of ambient light bouncing around from all the other direct light sources, but each light is going to be creating its own sort of shadow. So this type of small hard light that you would typically find all over the place generally is not the most attractive light. It can be good for accenting certain things and showing texture when need be, but if it's the only light that you have pointing all over your haircut, not only is it gonna look bad in photos, this is not even a photo thing. This is just a client looking in the mirror and feeling some kind of way about themselves Thing. So with these shadows that are created by the small hard light source, if you're doing a fade, every hair is going to have a hard shadow with a hard edge on it and it makes it so much harder to see what you're fading. And then when you go to look at the fade afterward, if every hair is casting a shadow, it can make the fade look worse than it actually is. And so it can be actually tremendously easier to work with softer light. So because this small hard light is unattractive, this is typically why in photo studios you'll see things like this. They use, <coughs> oh. they use large umbrellas like this to make the light source bigger because it makes things look smoother. Obviously, if you're in a small salon or studio, you can't be setting up a 40 inch umbrella and working around it, let alone setting up multiple 40 inch umbrellas to light the whole place. But if we were to look at the shape of a larger modifier like that, what you'll see is because the light is coming from a larger source, some of it can kind of miss the forehead and hit the opposite cheek. Some of it can kind of miss the chin and hit the opposite side of the uh, neck there. And so what ends up happening is that little bit of light that's coming from these angles further out on the larger light source, because they're able to miss the most uh, prominent features on the face toward the light, what ends up happening is you get a very soft fall off from highlights to shadows. And so the shadows aren't as defined looking and this means pores and wrinkles will look smoother. This means skin is just generally going to look smoother. This means when you go to look at a fade, you're not gonna be seeing a hard little shadow from every single hair coming off of that fade. Now, again, we can't just set up soft boxes all over our little salon. So what I've done in my studio is I've taken my lights and I pointed them up into the corner of a white ceiling and a white wall. What this is going to do is bounce the light out of that corner and cause basically a part of the wall and a part of the ceiling to be my larger light source. And the result is actually very similar to using a large softbox. So in this case, the light will be coming out of the light source, bouncing off of this ceiling, bouncing off of this wall, becoming diffused and just kind of bouncing around in there. And then when it comes back out the other side, it's coming from much further around the subject than it would directly out of the light source. And so it's effectively softening it up. Now granted, the bare light bulb pointed directly at whatever you're lighting is going to be much brighter. If you 
put it in a softbox or if you point it into a wall and only let the reflected light from the wall light your subject, you're going to be diminishing the amount of light there. And so you're going to have to use more light bulbs. But this is not a matter, what I'm talking about here as far as like good light, bad light, it's not a matter of how bright, it's a matter of the shape of the light, meaning the, whether it's diffused or not and the size of the light source is going to have a massive, massive difference on the way just everything looks in your salon. And, and again, it's not just a photography thing, it's not just a videography thing, it's a here's a mirror, look at your haircut, how do you feel about the way you look thing. If somebody has beautiful light on them, when you show them their new hairstyle, they're going to like their hairstyle more than if they have spotlights making their pores stand out. Now I want to get into the actual hardware that I use to do this in my studio. The last time I did this video, the bulbs that I recommended were by a company called Savage, and these were LED bulbs that are 5500K, which is like daylight, they're white, white bulbs. And I actually have been using those now for, I don't know, five years, but I just replaced them. Now, these Savage bulbs, I haven't had any of them burn out as far as like the LEDs going bad, but I have had the fans in them go out. And in fact, I've had them slowly start to go out to where they'll just squeal intermittently for a while. And so, you know, having a bulb with a fan in it is not super amazing, especially if the fan's gonna go bad sooner or later. So recently I decided to try putting smart lights in my house. I just wanted to see what it was about. And I was surprised to find that they're pretty affordable and simple now. When I had initially looked at Philips Hue bulbs a few years ago, I was like, I'm not gonna pay that. Like, it would be cool to have smart lights, but no, not for that. But now Philips actually makes a bulb available at Home Depot called, uh, it's part of their Wiz series. It uses a Wiz connected app. And with these bulbs, you can basically control everything about them. So if I come here into this app, I can tell these lights like, hey, turn on. I can change the color of them. Uh, let's see, warm white, there we go. I, I got the, RG, the full RGB one so I can make them any color, right? Uh, we can throw a little dance party in here and just make them all change colors. So this is pretty stinking huge for salon and barbershop life because you know, if you're trying to hang out and set the mood and make your client comfortable, you might want to do something like, I don't know, we'll do some warm white and we'll dim it down a little bit. So if I'm just hanging out, having a consultation with the client, I'll keep the lights something like this. But then if I want to show them their hair color and say, I don't actually even do hair color, but just theoretically, like, okay, let's take a look at your hair color there. We're, we're going to go to like white, white, white. And now I'm gonna say, okay, look at your blonde. Look how blonde it is. There's no yellow in there. And then after they love their hair, they can go back to uh, comfortable lights for the next client. I think that's just so neat, the uh, ability to do that. And on top of it, you know, if I wanna do a photo shoot or something and I wanna get creative and put some colored lights in here, like these can do that. I think I'll leave these there for a minute. I kinda of like that ambiance. So these lights were at Home Depot and they're like, between 15 and 20 bucks a bulb, you don't need a hub or anything. You just, they have Wi-Fi in the bulb. So you set it up to your shop's Wi-Fi and then you get an app, the Wiz connected app, and you can control them from your phone. It takes like 20 minutes to kind of roughly set it all up. So the lights weren't that expensive. However, when I put them in this room, initially I had four of them, it wasn't bright enough. It was kind of hard to do a haircut even with them at full brightness. And so what I ended up doing is buying these adapters off of Amazon that like double up the bulbs. So you could put two bulbs into one socket. I don't even know how much those cost. Maybe it was like eight bucks for the set or something. And so now I actually have eight bulbs in here in four sockets. So the sockets that I'm using, I actually got off of Amazon. You can get two of them for 10 bucks. These are like photography light sockets. They're um, E26 umbrella holders for photography purposes. And, and again, it's a two pack for like 10 bucks. And then those lights, th those light sockets actually mount on like a standard photography stud. Uh, meaning just like any generic photography light stand, it will mount on that. So what I ended up finding was a plate that mounts on the wall that has this generic photography stud on it. And these are between like 10 and 20 bucks a piece on Amazon. So what I've done is I mounted the plate on the wall, mounted the uh, socket on the plate, put the dual bulb adapter into the socket, and put two of these smart bulbs in each one. Now, the last time I did this video, I did get a lot of messages for a year after I did the video from people on Instagram saying, hey, I'm trying to light my barbershop. I watched your video. The shop's 15 feet by eight feet, but it has a weird corner and, and kind of like this L-shaped thing here. How many bulbs should I get? And I'm like, I don't know. So I can tell you when I worked in my last studio, it was a 10 by 10 room. I had one bulb in each corner. 
This room is 10 feet this way by 15 feet this way. So it's just barely bigger. And I still only have four bulbs, but what's different is this time I put them all along one wall. So I constantly always kind of have a dark side of the room because I don't do haircuts on that side of the room. And I don't do video on that side of the room. So as far as how many you'll need to light your space, like, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Just buy a few, try it, add more, and you know, find the sweet spot for you. Also, regarding like the way that I have all the bulbs, kind of like eight of them in four sockets, daisy chained together with an extension cord into one outlet, I'm not an electrician, and so I'll be pretty upfront here. Like, I'm not telling you to go plug a million lights into one socket. I have a client who's an electrician, and I texted him briefly and said, hey, I'm trying to do this. Am I going to burn the place down? And he said, no, you should be fine. But I'm not an electrician, and I'm not saying you should be fine. Ask somebody who knows what they're doing. Anyways, with all that said, I hope this has been helpful, and I hope that you will be able to light your small salon or barbershop or private studio in a way that will make your clients look and feel prettier than ever and that you can set the mood and the ambiance and ultimately just have a lot of fun with what you're doing. Thanks for watching.